Welcome back to P1. Today we're looking at the discriminant, unit 2.5. So if I have a quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, then I can use the formula, quadratic formula, to solve for x. Now, in the formula, what you'll notice is that there is a section inside or underneath the square root. There's b squared minus 4ac. And this is really important because if this is negative, then we get no real roots for our equation. Okay? As it doesn't hit the x-axis, we cannot solve it. If this b squared minus 4ac ends up being 0, then we actually get rid of, we don't have a plus or minus anything, because plus or minus 0 would stay the same. So we end up with just a single root, a single solution. And then if this b squared minus 4ac is positive, then we do have plus a number, minus a number. So we end up with two roots. So this b squared minus 4ac is really important. And this is what the discriminant is. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So let's look at how we're using this within a problem. So we've got x squared plus kx plus 16 has equal roots and we need to find out our value of k. So if it's got equal roots, it means that b squared minus 4ac equals 0. And I can see up here that a is 1, b is k, and c is 16. So k squared minus 4, lots of 1, lots of 16. So this is k squared minus 64 equals 0, k squared equals 64, k equals plus or minus 8. And that's it then. So k can either be positive 8 or k could be a negative 8. Okay, let's look at a problem now where we have another one x squared plus 8x plus k and we're looking for two distinct roots so again in this one we've got b squared minus 4ac and two distinctive roots means this needs to be greater than zero and from here you can see that a is 1 b is 8 and c is k so we've got 8 squared minus 4 lots of 1 lots of k greater than 0. So 64 minus 4k is greater than 0. And you also could be careful when you're dealing with inequalities. And the easiest way is to try and always avoid having to multiply or divide by negative numbers. So 64 is greater than 4k. And then if I divide by 4, I get 16. So k needs to be less than 16. And there is this question solved. Time for you to try a few. Okay, let's go through this one uh, kind of together. So you've got a constant up there. So you've got a equals 1, b equals negative 2k plus 1, and c equals 2k squared 
minus 7. So it's just remembering value in front of x squared, value in front of x, and constant. So coefficients and constant. Equal roots, so b squared minus 4ac equals 0. doing here is substituting it in and then simplifying. Now this one here, the 2k minus the 2 squared is probably a bit more useful there and the next one we can expand straight away. 8k squared plus 28. So Expand this square bracket, remember it is not just square the first and square the last, it is square the first, double the product, square the last. So minus 2k squared is 4k squared, minus 2k times minus 2 is 4k, doubled is 8k, and then minus 2 squared is 4. Now simplifying, I get minus 4k squared plus 8k plus 32. And I'm going to divide through by the negative 4 here. To make my life a little bit easier. Now this one factorises. So I'm just going to rewrite it up here a second. So to get to 8 is 1 and 8 or 2 and 4, and 2 and 4, whereas I've got a 1 positive and 1 negative, will be my solution. So k squared minus 4k and 2k is minus 2k, and then this is going to give me negative 8. So k equals negative 2, or k equals 4. Now, number 7. So here we can see we've got our quadratic equation here and it says it has real roots. So it doesn't say that we've got one root or two distinct roots. It could be one root, it could be two roots. It just says that they are real. So in this case we want greater than or equal to zero. So we're looking at b squared minus 4ac being greater than or equal to zero. And my a is k plus 1, my b is 12, and my c is k minus 4. And it's a matter of now substituting these in. So 12 squared minus 4 times k plus 1 times k minus 4 greater than or equal to 0. 12 squared minus 4 lots of... So we've got k squared minus 4k plus 1k is minus 3k and 1 times minus 4 is minus 4. Now I'm just going to rewrite this 12 squared as 144 and what I'm going to do is since I can divide 144 by 4 I am going to divide by 4 straight away so I get 36 minus k squared minus 3k minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, now all I'm going to do is expand my brackets. Just being careful with my signs. And then I'm going to take everything to the other side. Now obviously the 36 and the 4 is going to give me 40 there. So when I go to the other side I'm going to get positive k squared minus 3k and then the positive 40 will become negative 40 and that then as you can see is what we were requiring k squared minus 3k minus 40 
is less than or equal to zero. And then finally part B, hence find the possible values of k. So this is now just about solving this equation. So we've got k squared minus 3k minus 40. Now initially I'm just going to look at equal to zero to find my critical values. So it looks like it's going to factorise. And yeah, 5 and 8 will give me the 40 and that way around. So k equals minus 5 and k equals 8 are my critical Put it to the side. Critical values. Now, what I should do is a quick sketch. Going to go through minus five and plus eight. So it goes through eight. It goes through minus five. I actually hit set at minus forty, but it's not that important. Now we wanted less than or equal to zero. So less than or equal to zero is when this is below the line. Okay, so we're looking at this part of the graph. And this part of the graph appears when x is greater than or equal to negative five, but less than or equal to eight. Okay, so it's just important, do the sketch just so you can check whether you're inside of your critical values or outside of them, so to speak. Hopefully you found this uh, useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and come back soon for more videos on maths.